Today we're going to talk about electromagnetic fields and electromagnetic field sensitivity. It is a syndrome that is uh, more and more uh, apparent uh, and it's connected with chemical sensi sensitivity syndrome. Two stories that I'd like to mention. One is the NASA story with the astronauts in uh, the early days of Cape Canaveral. The astronauts would go out in space, come back, and they'd be very ill. You would see the astronauts being helped crawling on all fours. These were young astronauts. Uh, they go up in space and over there they get sick. It was called space sickness. Today NASA has put magnets on the spacesuits and in the space shuttle and they no longer get sick. What was happening was the astronauts were going far into space away from the magnetic field of the Earth and in the absence of the magnetic field they were getting sick because we need that magnetic field to stay healthy. So the magnets help the astronauts not get sick. The second story has to do with a uh, Harvard scientist that was looking at some paramesiums and he found them to be covered in a dirt coating which ended up being uh, the discovery of the pollutant called magnetite. And magnetite uh, turns out also at Harvard there were some studies that showed that inside our brains we've got about a hundred billion particles of magnets, magnetite. Uh, and um, magnetite, which comes from pollutants, uh, the engines of cars that are being worn, all that wear and tear ends up in magnetized nanoparticles that are breathed and drunk and they're entering into our system as a pollutant now. So the excess magnetite, turns out, uh, was what the scientist was looking at this paramecium and uh, he ordered another set of test tubes they were also dirty and so on and he found basically that there's magnetite everywhere now it's our new pollutant it's the uh, industrial age uh, of all the iron and steel that is being worn and worked well this magnetite gets into our body and it messes up with the magnetite that is supposed to be in our brain so what I found empirically is that using a magnet, uh, not near the head, because it's almost like too much of a you know, healing crisis, detoxification response, but if you hold it around your hands, uh, if you use some uh, magnets uh, around you, say a foot or two away, or hold them in your hands, or put them in your pocket, that helps people with electromagnetic sensitivity syndrome. And uh, I found it empirically to be very useful. Electromagnetic sensitivity syndrome uh, is also, it's a good idea to get a Gauss meter and uh, measure your home, find some hot spots where the fields are high and avoid them. The more you avoid uh, exposure to electromagnetic fields, the better your electromagnetic sensitivity will be. Hot spots will come from power lines or appliances and the whole idea is to walk the house with a uh, Gauss meter and find the hot spots and avoid putting beds and furniture where you spend a lot of time in those hot spots. It doesn't really matter what the fields are near the fuse box or right in front of the uh, TV or right in front of the microwave because what matters is what the fields are where you are on your chair or on your bed. One of the pollutants of electromagnetic fields that is uh, very powerful, very common, is the uh, alarm clock. We put the alarm clock right next to our brain so we can uh, hit the snooze in the morning. So it's good to put the alarm clock uh, far away from you or to get a battery operated one, not one that plugs into the wall. But without a Gauss meter it's impossible to know what's going on and uh, fortunately uh, to measure your home and do a survey it just takes a few minutes. You're walking home with a Gauss meter and you see the needle or the digital or the beeps or the lights go on and the idea is not to put your bed there, and if you have, to move the bed far away to the other side of the room. Uh, sometimes just a few feet will do.